Hello and welcome back to California Geology. I am Dr. Robert Lopez. Today I want to continue on with the San Andreas Fault and maybe look at some historic earthquakes and something about uh, maybe prediction uh, of earthquakes or at least probabilities of earthquakes on the San Andreas Fault. Now look at the, at the PowerPoint here. We see that in California there has been um, at least three uh, well, well, two historic, one in 1906 and the one in 1857, large magnitude earthquakes, 7.8, uh, 7.9, almost 8.0. Uh, so the 1857 event down here near, near Tahoe Pass, which is at the top of the grapevine as you're going from Bakersfield over toward Los Angeles on, on I-5. And that one, magnitude 7.5. And in the Carrizo Plain over here um, near San Luis Obispo, there was, along the San Andreas Fault, there was a rupture of about 9 meters of offset. 9 meters of offset. So this was a fairly large magnitude earthquake, uh, quite a bit of energy released. And one of the things we found, there's a place out on, on, um, on the San Andreas Fault called Pallet Creek. And Pallet Creek uh, has, has experienced a series of of earthquakes that occur in, in groups of two, then there's one and two, but geologists have sort of worked out a recurrence interval, and uh, for earthquakes of this magnitude, about 7.9 to 8.0, the recurrence interval is about 132 years, and it's been, well, since 1857, it's already been 158 years, so certainly they're well overdue for a big earthquake in Southern California. That's why Southern California really is is gone to great efforts to inform their public to be prepared uh, at least have water uh, because they they are overdue for a large magnitude earthquake. The event down here in in the Salton Trough region in 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 um, the southern San Andreas here uh, around 1680 magnitude 7.7 that hasn't really ruptured in that magnitude since then. There was a uh, a pretty good magnitude six earthquake um, about maybe 2010 down here in the Brawley area, but uh, uh, remember. Um, this is almost two orders of magnitude larger. So in other words, uh, a magnitude 7.7, 8.0 would be about 900. It would take about 900 or more magnitude 6, earth, six earthquakes to make one of these. So this is a much larger event. And then we, we also know about the 1906 San Francisco earthquake where there was about 4.7 meters of offset here at the, at the epicenter. And based on some of the recurrence intervals, uh, and rates of of the of the San Andreas Fault moving in this particular area of California. And remember, the rate is anywhere from 2.1 to 2.7 centimeters per year over the last 1,800 years. And so if we do a recurrence interval on that, trying to move a rock 470 centimeters, remember, recall that we got a, a, a recurrence interval of anything between 174 years to 224 years, right? So... Um, we're still okay up here, um, but the rock or the rocks are beginning to accumulate strain there. And then I also talked about um, this this part of the San Andreas, which is the creeping section from Park Field here on up to uh, San Juan Bautista. So we we talked a little bit about that on our last um, uh, talk here. And then uh, the other thing that this slide mentioned is on average, uh, large earthquakes recur in the San Andreas Fault about every 150 years. In fact, I'll have to. I'll say more about that here in a little bit. Now, um, some features that we see on on strike slip faults, San Andreas type faults, are um, uh, offset streams. So here's a channel coming down. And you see the offset stream, and then this little thing here is a ridge, and these are called called a shutter ridge. And a shutter ridge, uh, as as this block here is moving toward the left here. Uh, this ridge will will move across the valley of this stream and and close it off. And essentially, it, it shuts the shuts the valley. So it's called a shutter ridge. And then we'll have these linear uh, ridges in here. Um, uh, maybe a pond might develop in here. This this sag pond are very common uh, along strike slip faults. Um, we'll see a scarp right, which is a surface break of the fault line. Uh, some fault benches. Some variety of features. In fact, let's look at um, a picture here looking at, at the Garlock Fault over here in the Mojave Desert. And we see that uh, uh, here's an offset stream, clearly offset. And then this is a little ridge here that's coming across. And it's going to, uh, in fact, this little ridge is offsetting the valley here, right? So, in fact, this is a left lateral fault where this ridge is, is moving across, closing this valley. 
this ridge is closing this valley. So there's some shutter ridges right in there. And then uh, we talked about some of the Bay Area faults, San Gregorio, San Andreas, Hayward, and Calaveras, right? Those are the, and then the, the northern extension of the Hayward, which is the Rogers Creek. Uh, I didn't show you a map of the Southern California faults. Remember, I talked about the San Jacinto and, and Elsinore faults. So here is the Salton Sea, uh, the Imperial Valley, so Salton Sea, Salton Trough right in here. Uh, Chocolate Mountains, that's where Joshua Tree is up in here. But the San Andreas Fault is skirting the east side of the Salton Trough here, uh, Coachella Valley. And then, uh, uh, interestingly, the San Andreas Fault, as it does Big Bend, it kind of breaks into two main faults, the Banning Fault and the Mission Creek Fault. Banning Fault sort of kind of peters out and dies out over here, whereas the Mission, Mission Creek Fault seems to follow into the San Bernardino Mountains and then along the Big Bend of the San Andreas Fault. The San Jacinto Fault here is by the Santa Rosa Mountains, right? Borrego Springs, Santa Rosa Mountains. Uh, you can see it's close to Palm Springs right in here, and the San Jacinto uh, Peaks are right in here. And then uh, a little farther to the west of the San Jacinto Fault is the Elsinore Fault. In fact, let's look at a, a map here. So here we can see the, the San Andreas Fault, and then it breaks into the Banning Fault right here, Banning Fault, and then you can sort of fault the Mission Creek uh, follow the Mission Creek Fault through here that does a big bend in the in the um, uh, transverse ranges. And then this prominent fault right here is the Elsinore Fault. You can see the Elsinore Fault, but then if we move a little farther this way, these are the, the uh, Santa Rosa Mountains, so this would be the uh, San Jacinto Fault right in here, San Jacinto Fault. So we have um, uh, the Elsinore, San Jacinto, and then uh, the, the, the basically the banning um, Banning and Mission Creek Faults, which kind of blend into the San Andreas Fault back over here. And then we can follow the San Andreas up into the transit ranges and then over here into the coast ranges, all through California. Uh, here is a, a famous area in California that's called Wallace Creek. Now Wallace Creek is in this place called the Carrizo Plain. And the Carrizo Plain is about maybe 35, 38 miles uh, northeast of San Luis Obispo. It's near the town of uh, Atascadero and, and, um, and um, well, Pismo Beach area, a little bit inland from that region. And here you can clearly see the San Andreas Fault, the scarp right in here. And you can see this, this, this Wallace Creek comes down and is offset. And you can see the offset related to movement on the San Andreas Fault. Now, um, thinking about predictions and, and probabilities, in 2008, um, there is this... Uh, um, this uniform model for uh, for earthquake rupture prediction, um, and and they basically uh, they had they came out with in there'll be a ninety nine percent probability, which is essentially one hundred percent, that in the next thirty years California statewide will have a magnitude six point seven earthquake. And remember, six point seven is the size of the Northridge earthquake, which caused considerable damage down in Southern California down in uh, back in nineteen ninety four. Uh, so 99% probability, and then obviously uh, the redder areas, uh, uh, more purple areas, are regions that are going to have the higher percentage. And then um, more recently, in, in um, 2015, this, this uh, uh, uniform California earthquake rupture forecast, that's what it is, the rupture forecast version 3 came out in March of 2015, and they've decreased the, the statewide probability by about 5%. So instead of 99, they have 94%. That, this, that somewhere in the state there's going to be an earthquake in the next 30 years of magnitude 6.7, uh, similar to that Northridge earthquake. However, um, uh, they determined that based on models of earthquakes that occurred not just in California, but in, 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 um, in the Middle East, in the Himalaya range, uh, in, in Japan, in China, that it seems that, that um, some earthquakes that, that, that rupture can actually increase probability of rupture uh, or, or large magnitude ruptures on adjacent faults. So in, in, one, in this scenario, one fault can actually lead to large earthquakes on a, on a, on a second fault. And so with that, they, they've increased the probability of a large magnitude earthquake of 7.8 to 8.3 by about 4.8%. So there's been an increase in that particular uh, uh, um, data set there. Uh, but nonetheless, um, you can see they picked out uh, the, the, 
the San Francisco Bay Area because that's a, a, a highly populated region as well as Southern California over here. Now, uh, looking at the Bay Area, I showed you this already. Uh, of all the Bay Area faults, right, uh, here we got a 63% probability that, that a 6.7 earthquake or greater will occur on any of these faults in the Bay Area. And you can see that the, the Hayward Fault at 31%, that has the highest probability. So that's, it hasn't ruptured in, um, in historic time. Or, or, sorry, since 1868. Uh, and remember, there's about a 140 year uh, uh, recurrence interval for this fault here. Now, um, other thing that's kind of interesting in th this clustering of earthquakes, uh, prior to the 1906 earthquake in the 1800s, uh, remember we really didn't start keeping good records till about 1875, but you can see that there were several magnitude 6 earthquakes. Here are the 6.9 in 1868. Well, that's uh, the Hayward uh, Fault earthquake. And then uh, another one back in 1838. So these are all in the Bay Area. And you can see as, as we approach uh, the 1906 event, the earthquakes increase. Lots of magnitude sixes, five, fives and sixes until the big one hits. And then after that, there was really only a, a couple that were magnitude six or greater. Uh, the one in the, these two in 1926. And those are the ones that um, probably occurred on the, uh, on the San Gregorio Fault over by Santa Cruz, if you remember that. So maybe this is just a, an aftershock really of this 1906 event. And then from that period, there's basically nothing, uh, no earthquakes greater than, than magnitude six until you get to, um, to really uh, 1984, you have a 6.2 event, and then, uh, which is Koalinga, that's a little farther south of us. And then the, the shock we get in 1989 with the Loma Prieta earthquake of 6.9. And then more recently, we, we've had uh, about a 5.4 in 2007 over here at Alum Rock. So um, if history is to repeat itself, or if, at least if earthquakes on the San Andreas Fault follow the same pattern, then before we have another large event, we should expect to see lots of smaller earthquakes, magnitude 6.5s, 5.6s. So these are, and they're occurring, you know, a couple, three per year. Uh, uh, and again, they're not really necessarily relieving the strain that's being accumulated. They may be imparting more strain on another segment of a fault, which, which eventually will lead to a large rupture. That's what the new, new model is finding. So uh, one thing we, we want to be aware of is that in the next 15 years, we should expect a lot of little earthquakes. Well, not, actually not little. These are actually significant. Managed 6.4. 6.3, 6.9, so we should expect more of these types of earthquakes in, in the near future. And then at the end, we'll have to prepare for another big event. But we're probably still another 30 to 50 years off for this one. Now, um, this is that Alum Rock quake of 2007. You can see it, it was on the Calaveras Fault here, magnitude about 5.4. And then this is a shake map or the intensity map, seeing that you can have yet strong. Uh, uh, to to uh, light damage that occurred um, around the epicenter, and then it was felt out right throughout Modesto. And the, in fact, I felt it pretty strongly in Santa Cruz. I would say it was about a a, a, a five there. Now, um, other things we should point out. So, as the the rate of large earthquakes in the San Francisco Bay Area uh, abruptly dropped after the 1906 earthquake, and the San Andreas Fault slipped so much over such a great length in that quake that the strain was reduced on most faults throughout the region. Uh, strain has been slowly building up, however, we haven't reached the levels that we had in the 1800s. And as we reach those levels, we need to, it's going to occur by having more of these uh, earthquakes occur, more magnitude 6 earthquakes in the near future, leading to a larger event. Mm -hmm.